Hi, this is Rachel. So in my last video, we drew these trigonometric function graphs. So what we're going to do in this video is look at some calculations using these trigonometric functions. So we may be asked to find the values of certain points. So when sine is 80 degrees, we are asked to find that value. So we'll talk a bit about these. Now you can notice that we've got one for sine and also one for sine minus one. I'll talk about what that means in a sec, but we've got the minus one for each. So we're gonna do a calculation for each of these. So let's start up here with sine 80. So to actually get a value for these is pretty easy. We just pop it into a calculator. So if I go sine 80, so it's 80 degrees, sine 80 gives me 0.98. There we go. And that is my answer. It's as simple as popping it into a calculator. Now what that actually means is, what is it's asking what is this value when sine is 80 degrees. So my sine graph at 80. So my sine graph peaks at 90. And so if I just put that on, that peak is at 90. And therefore my line crosses at 80, which will be about there. I don't know if you can see that little spot, I hope so. So that's at 80. I'm just going to draw a line down there and put 80 degrees. And it is asking if I then draw a line across to here, what that value will be. So at 80 degrees, that value is at 0.98, which makes sense. It's really close to that one. Good. I'm going to come back to the minus one after I do the others. So let's have a go at cos 100. So we're looking at the same thing. We can pop it into a calculator, cos 100. And that is giving me 0. Well, minus 0. 0.17. So a bit odd that this is a minus, isn't it? Well, actually, no, it isn't. So let's look at it in terms of this graph. So I'm finding my degrees along the x-axis so 100 is about there-ish, 100, and I'll mark that on, so there-ish. And again, these don't need to be beautiful to scale, it's just to give you an idea. And it crosses the, the cos curve, sorry, it's cos curve, crosses it there. And so it's asking, what is the value on the y-axis when the cos curve is at 100 degrees. So again, I'm going to draw my line across to there. And because it's below zero, it's in this negative section that goes down to negative one, it makes sense that it's a minus number, that it's a negative number. So that is at minus 0.17. And like I said, it's not a beautifully drawn graph. And then our last one, tan 200. So pop it in the calculator and that's given me a value 0.36 and showing that on a graph so we're looking for 200 degrees on here which is right here so 200 which joins at about that point on the graph yeah, draw it across. Now, tan is awkward. So because these uh, axes go up to infinity and minus infinity, we don't really get much of a sense of scale like we did the, with the previous two, but we can just write on there that it's at 0.36. Okay, lovely. So now let's have a look at these inverses. So for the ones we've just done, we found the degrees on the x-axis and then found what the y value was. Now for the inverse, we literally do the inverse of that. We do the opposite. So let's go back to our sign. So this time we've been given the y value, oops, and we need to find 
the x value. We need to find the degrees. So sine, the y value is 0 0.5, which is about halfway between one and zero. So I'm going to follow that on the graph and then follow that down. And that is my value where sine, uh, where the y-axis is 0 0.5. So I've got a degrees. Now, we did all these ones on the calculator. How do we do the minus one on a calculator? Well, there is a function. And so I don't know if you can see this, but above the sine, there is a sine to the minus one. So I'm gonna go shift, sine, and that gives me my sine to the minus one. And I can just pop in my 0.5 and that will give me my answer for the calculation. But if I'm asked to show it on a graph, I'll be able to do it like this. Now, you may not always be asked to show your thinking on a graph, but if you are, it's worth knowing how to do this. But for the most part, just being able to pop this into a calculator is the important skill. Okay, let's move on to cos. So cos minus one is 0 0.7. So my cos minus one is above the cos. So shift cos, and what are we doing? 0 0.7. And that has given me a value of 45 point, eh, round to six. Oh, and these are degrees, aren't they? So I should put my degree symbol in really. There we go. And again, if I wanted to show this on the graph, so my cos minus one is at 0 0.7. So 0 0.7 is, I reckon about there. If I follow this along, there we go. At that point is where the cos links up with 0 0.7 and I go down. And yeah, it looks about halfway, which is about 45.6, lovely. Okay, and now this last one, well, you know the drill by now, pop it into a calculator. So shift, tan, to give me tan minus one. And this one, you'll notice that my number is much bigger. So in sine and cos, I can only have a number between one and minus one, because that's how far my y-axis extends. With tan, I can have any number between infinity and minus infinity. So any number at all. So in this, I'm being asked to find tan minus one of 50. And I get, again, I'm gonna round 88.9. There we go. And I can show it on this graph, just like with the others. Um, it's a little bit harder due to that scaling thing, but you know, you can kind of guess like you can show it roughly so honestly I work backwards for this one so I know that I've got 88.9 which my 90s here so my 88.9 is pretty close so that's my 88.9 and I then just work backwards to 50 and so you know like I said it's extremely rough it's less important on a tan graph to be able to show it, but it's worth a try. So this is how you calculate the trigonometric functions and also how you show how you found them on a graph if you are asked to. Now these are looking a bit cluttered. You've probably only been asked to do one thing at a time, but it's worth knowing.